Welcome to Excel Works video tutorials. In this video, I'll demonstrate the use of IV Solve, the ordinary differential algebraic system solver in Excel Lab. Let's begin by looking at the manual page for IV Solve. IV Solve is designed to solve a system of first order differential equations in any of these three forms a pure differential system, differential algebraic system and an implicit differential algebraic system where the right left hand side is coupled by a mace matrix. In the case of a differential algebraic system it has to be listed in the following order where the differential equations are listed first and the algebraic equations are listed last. IV solve takes three required parameters and four optional parameters. It's best to illustrate these parameters through an example, but let me first describe these parameters before we move on to the example. Uh, the first parameter is the list of the right-hand side functions. The variables is the list of the uh, differential variables. And solution specifies the integration range for the, the system. In case we have a DAE system, we specify the number of algebraic equations in M or the matrix A if we have an implicit system. Tolerances allow you to specify absolute and relative tolerance for the uh, solver, uh, either for the system as a whole or for each individual component of the system. Control is uh, a set of uh, key value pairs similar to uh, all XLAB solvers. And these key value pairs allow you to uh, con uh, control the solver, for example, algorithm selection. Uh, we can look at some of the available keys. We can specify the algorithm, some settings for the integration algorithms, and we have some of the best known uh, stiff solvers like RADU5, PDF, Implicit Adam. We can also control, for example, the internal Jacobian calculation. To, uh, the fourth optional parameter is the system Jacobian. You seldom need to supply this, but if you have an analytical Jacobian, you can define it and pass it as well to the solver. Let me move to any, our first example and uh, some, most of this will become clear. Our first example is a three equation system that describes a chemical reaction. Uh, the initial values are given by y1 equal 1 at time equals 0 and the rest are 0 and the integration time is from 0 to 1000. I've already written the uh, right hand side formulas to save some time. It's always a good idea also to uh, insert labels, although they are not required, but it aids readability. So let me show the formulas I've typed in, and they correspond directly to the uh, ODE uh, right-hand side functions. I've used here y1, y2, and y3 as my variables. And uh, the first thing to remember is to specify the initial conditions inside the variables y1, y2, and y3. I've specified the value 1 in y1, uh, which is my initial condition, and 0 and 0 for y2 and y3. Uh, the next step is to uh, invoke IV solve. IV solve is, is an array formula and it requires uh, pre allocated memory to run. So there are a couple ways we can actually execute IV solve. Uh, one way is to uh, simply allocate memory. So we have four variables, including time. And uh, let me start from the top right here. And then I can select as many rows as I like. And then while this array is allocated, I can type the formula, my formula in the uh, formula bar as follows. So, my first argument is a reference to the right-hand side formulas, and that would be b10 to b12. The next argument is a reference to the system variables, and it's important here to uh, pass them in the following order. The first variable is always the system time, and we choose usually the variable t1. The rest of the variables have to be in the order that you have uh, presented the equations. 
so it will be y1 y2 and y3 and I can do y1 to y3 as a range close my parentheses this is uh, a standard Excel union operator so it's basically combining all these references in one union reference t1 y1 y2 and y3 my third argument is simply the integration time and I'm going to integrate the system from 0 to 1000 so I can pass this as uh, initial time final time as a constant array and then these are the required parameters now to execute IV solve you have to press control shift enter because it's an array formula and if I do this it computes the solution for me in the allocated memory in the following order the first row is the list of the system variables t1 y1 y2 and y3 now let me explain the way IV solve presents the output I've uh, allocated a random number of rows so what IV solve does is it takes the initial time with the default input the initial time the final time and divides it up and the allocated number of rows uh, so it might not be an equal division depending how many rows you have allocated now there are, mul there are uh, multiple options where you can customize the output let's go back to the help page and look at some of those options so again in the third parameter if we scroll down a little bit uh, you will see that we have used let me try to zoom in so it's clear so we have used the default format which is specifying t input the t initial and t final however we can s add a third optional a third parameter which is the number of divisions and this is instructs the solver to take the initial time and final time and divide them by as many as we are asking for of course you have you must have enough rows for uh, f to accommodate the number of divisions you are requesting the third format is if you are interested in the output at certain specific points you can in fact can pass a vector of points for the time starting with the initial and ending with the final and the points your desired points in between and the solver will only report the solution at these specified points let's try to experiment with this a little bit and then we can move on to some of the optional arguments going back to Excel so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, before we actually do anything is plot the solution uh, we are going to uh, insert a, f a, gr a graph and what I'm going to do is simply highlight my solution select a scatter graph using smooth lines and Excel inserts the following graph for us now one thing to notice is the scale of these let me pull this down a little bit so we have better view the scales of these uh, uh, variables is different so we have y1 on the order of 1 and y3 is also on the order of 1 but y2 is in the order of 10 to minus 6 so uh, we need to specify a second axis for y2 for the uh, for it to show the detail of it so we, what we can do is click on y2 uh, uh, right click on format data series and secondary click on series options and then secondary axis close so now we have added a, third, a second uh, axis for y2 and now we can see the details of y2 now let's uh, bring this down so we have access to the numbers uh, let me uh, demonstrate some of the effects of playing with the output so for example here if I decide to select 20 divisions I can add the number 20 and then re-execute my solver and I'm getting an error here it tells me that too few rows allocated for output at least 22 rows are needed uh, th this is a standard error format from it for four XLAB solvers it gives you the cell address that generated the error and the solver and information to help you diagnose the problem obviously I'm asking for 20 div divisions but I've only allocated uh, from row 2 to row 22 I've only allocated 20 rows so what I can do is simply highlight this range again and increase it by two more rows as required and then go back here control shift enter 
and now I can get my clean solution because now I'm requesting 20 divisions between 0 and 1000 and it's giving me at equal increments of 50. Let's move now to a second example. My second system is very similar to the, except that my third equation now is an algebraic constraint. So uh, to save time, I've already typed the right hand side formulas. Uh, the third, the algebraic equation is listed last and is simply the same, written in the same fashion. Uh, now uh, my solver is again referencing the right hand side, the variables for the system, and uh, the range of integration. Now notice that I've passed 1 in the fourth parameter, which corresponds to uh, m, if we go back to the uh, annual page m corresponds to the number of algebraic equations in the system if we are using this form. Going back to Excel I have only one algebraic equation so I'm passing the number one. Uh, remember it has to be listed last. Simply executing this solver in the allocated range recomputes the solution. And one thing interesting to do here is to verify if, if our constraint has been satisfied. So I'm going to uh, in a column here So in fact here I'm going to write my first formula. And subtract 1 and we get 0. To verify this for the rest of the uh, data points it, we can drag this down and as you can see uh, we are very close to 0 with the numerical precisions. So uh, we know that we have uh, uh, an accurate solution for the system. Now let me demonstrate some of the additional optional arguments. I've actually prepared another solution here in this array using more optional arguments which I'm going to describe now. As you can see here I'm passing RTOL and RTOL is defined as a vector Q2 to Q4. Another way I mean I could also specify absolute tolerances and pass two arrays here. I could, for example, specify so the first column would be the relative tolerance, the second column would be the absolute tolerance. And I can go back to my solution here. And for our tool pass this entire array here and we execute my solver. I would like uh, next to move briefly to a third example just to uh, demonstrate the performance of this solver before we conclude this video. So my uh, third example is uh, a 12 uh, system equation that describe also a stiff chemical reaction. So I'll try to zoom out a little bit. Well you can see the system we are trying to solve. I've already actually solved the system to uh, save time for typing the equations. Uh, this is a stiff system and I'm integrating the system from 0 to 100 and I just wanted to uh, evaluate the system in real time in front of you so you can get uh, a feel for the performance of IV solver and you can see by hit I'm hitting control shift enter and it recomputes the solution almost instantaneously. Uh, we can even increase the time to 500 compute it in the same range and it computes it almost instantaneously you can see the numbers have changed now going from 0 to 500 IV solve is pretty fast actually it's pretty robust and it's very easy to use it has uh, all the controls that you might need to fine tune any complex problem uh, thank you for listening and uh, we will talk more about IV Solve in future videos with more of the advanced settings. Thank you.